In this week's technical, I'm talking about drugs and where to keep them. Medicines are used in agriculture every day, sometimes for treatment purposes, things like antibiotics or anti-inflammatories, or for preventative reasons, so vaccines would be the key one. Why is storage important? If they're not stored properly, they won't work. You end up giving medicines that don't work and it ends up being, as usual, a waste of time, money, and it jeopardizes animal health. And you might think this is so straightforward as to be unnecessary. And yes, it is straightforward, it is easy to get right. That doesn't stop people getting it wrong all the time. And what got me thinking about this is a few things. At our practice, we hold a mastering medicines course that talks about all sorts of things, including storage of medicines. And it is very common to come across misconceptions or easily avoidable mistakes. Another reason, I saw a tweet the other week from Ed Hill. Ed is a farm vet up in Scotland at Thrums. And I'll put that up here now. It just shows just how easy it is to get things wrong. Likewise, some great work done by Rosie Lyle at Bishopton down in Yorkshire on how nine out of 10 fridges on farms are outside of the recommended temperatures. So easy to get right, we're still getting it wrong. Let's get into it. Hello again, hopefully a nice quick technical this week. It's not the most exciting topic, but it is probably one of the ones that makes a big difference to your bottom line, the health and welfare of your stock. And it's something everyone can start doing tomorrow. The topic is, is storage of medicines. Most farms will have at least a couple of bottles of something sitting on the shelf. Um, and some big farms will have probably a dedicated room. Now, for most medicines, it's very straightforward. This is our pharmacy. And really, all you want to make sure is that they are kept at a reasonably sensible temperature. So not wildly high. So, you know, not more than about 25 degrees Celsius and not freezing. And, and how do you know that that's the case? Often medicines are kept in an outbuilding and you don't necessarily know what temperature it is in there at certain times of the year and at certain times of the day or night. A really sensible way of doing it is picking up one of these. So it's a little temperature monitor. You can see there, hopefully it's got a USB ending. You can plug in this little doodah to your computer. It then shows you the data it's been logging. I think it's about every minute or so, perhaps every hour. Um, and you can see how the temperature goes up and down because it will go up and down over the course of the day and night you just want it to be within a sensible range you know if you're dipping way down into the extreme cold or hitting way up in the extreme hot then you've got you know you've got an issue and you know you either need to move where you keep your medicines or perhaps take measures like put an insulated box in within which you keep your medicines the other thing most medicine storage facilities need to be is secure so often you know with a lock um of some description, whether it's uh, a padlock or a combination lock, uh, it's normally a requirement of most farm assurance schemes in the UK. It just makes sense. It means people either can't steal your meds or they can't have access to them inappropriately. So that's very straightforward. Again, very easy thing to do. Some medicines, and in particular vaccines, are a little bit more delicate. So they need to be kept refrigerated. The magic range is between two degrees Celsius and eight degrees Celsius. As soon as we go outside of that range, the vaccines then degrade. What's the gold standard? This is our practice fridge. As you can see, pretty swanky. Purpose built for this sort of thing. It's got a readout um, and equally it records the temperatures which you can then review at a later date. Um, you can see nothing's touching the sides. You don't want anything touching the size of your fridge because that can affect how, how well it stays within that nice temperature range. Um, and you don't want it, chock, basically you don't want it chock-a-block full. I know what you're saying, I'm a poor farmer, how could I afford one of these swanky things? Now, yes, these will cost a bit of money. If you're a reasonable sized farming business, this is a business expense. Most farms would not have to have one this size. You could easily get a similar model with a readout temperature that fits underneath the counter for a few hundred quid. 
Plenty of our farms at certain times of the year will have literally thousands of pounds worth of vaccine in them. Getting a decent fridge and making sure it works to me seems like a reasonable investment in your time and money. So this is the gold standard, what the most farm fridges look like. So you know I'm not a farmer, but I do have a fridge that will be doing a very similar job to most farm fridges. It's just in here. Often these fridges are old ones which have been relegated because of their age. And suddenly we're expecting them to do a harder job where the temperature fluctuations are gonna be a lot more dramatic than if they were in the house. So just consider that. If you're saying, right, I don't need to buy a new fridge, I'm pretty sure mine works, then the least I would do is just make sure it's working. So buy one of those temperature loggers I showed you back at the practice, or a minimum and maximum thermometer. The difference between that and a regular thermometer is that it shows you the range. Remember that fridge is gonna to have to deal with much cooler or warmer temperatures depending on the time of day. We're not necessarily gonna check it every lunchtime or in the middle of the night in the winter when it's gonna be most challenged. So those minimum maximum thermometers just do the data collection for you. One of the myths I like to dispel about being a vet is that we all earn huge amounts of money. I know you see the big vet bills going out at the end of the month, but I promise I'm a man of the people too. Out here in the garage will resemble the environment a lot of farm fridges are in. It's an old one, it's been relegated out to the garage after a new model came in. Again, very common scenario out on farms. So remember, I'm a man of the people. Just got my regular man of the people uh, foods in my outdoor fridge. Obviously just gonna have to make a bit of space for this, but just gonna move my smoked salmon out of the way. Oh, fillet of beef we can push to the back. Just part the champagne. Got saffron, I don't even know, that's not even meant to be in the fridge. What do you mean it's not giving the right impression? Fine. Like I said, I'm a man of the people. Just my outdoor fridge like any regular man of the people would have. So I'll show you where to put your drugs and where to put your thermometers if you're using them. Right, yeah, so just uh, so I'll run about where this uh, spam is. So just, there you go, it's roughly what I live on for about a week. Got my one of my five a day there. Anyway, drugs. So you wanna put your drugs in the middle of the fridge, same as your thermometer, not uh, in here. You tend to get bigger temperature fluctuations uh, on the sides and in, in the door. So let's keep things as stable as possible in the center of the fridge. Make sure you've got plenty of space. The other thing you can do if you're worried about fluxes in temperature is you get a couple of big containers of water, you put them in and they almost act as stabilizers. So they sort of hold the temperature, hopefully within that two to eight degrees range.